What happened to Pure Prairie League? Pure Prairie League was formed in Columbus, Ohio in 1970 by singer, songwriter, guitarist Craig Fuller, bass player Jim Lanham, and drummer Tom McGrail, who named the band after a woman's temperance group in the 1939 Errol Flynn movie Dodge City. Pure Prairie League built up a following in Ohio, playing around Cincinnati for a year before earning a record contract with RCA Victor. By that time, McGrail had left and been replaced by Jim Collin, though Billy Hines had also drummed with the band for a time. Adding still guitar player John David Call, the group went into the studio and recorded its self-titled album, which was released in March 1972, with a cover depicting a Western character named Luke, an illustration drawn by famed American painter-slash-illustrator Norman Rockwell that had first appeared on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post in 1927. Luke would turn up in all the band's subsequent album covers, giving them a distinctive visual conception. Pure Prairie League did not sell well enough to reach the charts, and the group fragmented. Lanham, Coughlin, and Call left, and remaining members Fuller and Powell brought back Hines, who in turn recruited a friend, keyboard player Michael Connor, to play on the second album, Busting Out, and subsequently became a full-fledged band member. Among the other session musicians on the album was David Bowie associate Mick Ronson, who played guitar and arranged the strings. Though later considered a landmark in country rock, Busting Out initially suffered disappointing sales upon release in September 1972, and RCA dropped the group. But they added a second friend of Hines, bassist Michael Riley, and continued to play around the Midwest. During this period, Fuller encountered legal difficulties over his claim of conscientious objector status to avoid the draft, eventually serving two years in a hospital instead, and a fun fact is he was later pardoned by President Gerald Ford. This forced him to leave the group and he was replaced by Larry Goshorn. Call at the same time also rejoined the group, and in late 1974, Pure Prairie League's touring began to pay off as radio stations started playing Amy, a song from Busting Out leading RCA to issue this song as a single, reissue the album, and re-sign the band. Busting Out entered the charts in February 1975, nearly two and a half years after its release, and rose into the top 40, eventually going gold. Amy charted in March 1975 and became a top 40 hit. Of course, the song had been written and sung by Fuller, who was unfortunately no longer a member of the band, and he would later resurface in 1976 in the band American Flyer. Instead, the sextet of Call, Connor, Gosshorn, Hines, Powell, and Riley made Pure Prairie League's third album, Two Lane Highway, joined by the country stars Chet Atkins, Amy Lou Harris, and Johnny Gimble and it was released in the spring of 1975. The title track became a minor chart entry, and the album reached the top 40. Pure Prairie League's fourth album, If the Shoe Fits, was released in early 1976 and was another top 40 hit, spawning a minor country chart entry in a cover of the Buddy Holly hit, That'll Be the Day. The band's fifth album, Dance, followed in the fall of 1976, Unfortunately, it was a disappointing seller, only getting to the top 100 on the Billboard 200s, though it became Pure Prairie League's first album to reach the country charts. A similar level of success greeted the 2LP concert recording Live Taking the Stage, which was released in the summer of 1977. After that album was released, Call left the band and was replaced by Goshorn's brother, Tim. On the way was Pure Prairie League's 7th album, Just Fly, and it was released in 1978 and was another modest seller. At this point, the band fragmented again. The Goshorn brothers decamped to form their band, and Powell retired to spend more time with his family, depriving the group of his last original member. The remaining trio of friends, Heinz, Connor, and Riley, were left in possession of the band's name but in need of a new frontman. 
Their answer was Oklahoma's Vince Gill, and he was followed by Reed's player Patrick Bolin. This quintet released Pure Prairie League's eighth album, Can't Hold Back, in the spring of 1979. Unfortunately, though, the sales were disappointing, and the group left RCA and signed to Casablanca Records, a label better known for disco than country rock. In early 1980, Bowen was replaced by Jeff Wilson, a singer and guitarist, and Pure Prairie League recorded its Casablanca debut, Firing Up. The album was preceded by the single Let Me Love You Tonight, which became a top 10 hit, pulling Firing Up into the top 40 of the Billboard 200. A follow-up single, I'm Almost Ready, made the top 40, and a third single, I Can't Stop the Feeling, also made the charts. Pure Prairie League returned with its 10th album, Something in the Night, in the spring of 1981, prefaced by the single Still Right Here in My Heart, which made the top 40, followed by the underrated chart entry, You're Mine Tonight. The album didn't do as well as its predecessor, but it did chart in the Billboard 200 and the top 100 of the chart. Unfortunately, this marked the end of Pure Prairie League's national prominence as Casablanca went bankrupt and Gil left the band, eventually becoming a successful country solo artist and now is currently a member of the Eagles, replacing Glenn Fry. Songwriter Gary Burr took over lead singer duties from 1982 until 1985 when Fuller rejoined and he remained until 1987 and moved on to join their reformed Little Feet, replacing the great Lowell George. At that point, the Pure Prairie League dissolved. However, in 1998, Riley and Fuller launched a new edition of the band. The lineup included Connor, Rick Shell, Fats Kaplan, and Curtis Wright. This version of the group began work on a new album in 2002, but abandoned the sessions. Connor unfortunately passed away in the fall of 2004 after a long struggle with cancer. With a lineup of Fuller, Riley, Shell, Wright, and Kaplan, Pure Prairie League released a new album, All in Good Time, in the fall of 2005 on the Tiny Drifters Church imprint. The band continued to play shows in various configurations and in 2012 settled on a lineup of John David Call, Mike Riley, Scott Thompson, and Donnie Lee Clark. Former member Tim Gosshorn died at his home in Williamstown, Kentucky after a bout with cancer on April 15, 2017 at the age of 62. In 2018, the group added member Randy Harper on vocals, guitar, and keyboards. Tim Gosshorn's brother Larry, who had played with Pure Prairie League from 1973 to 1978, also fell victim to cancer and died on September 14, 2021. In 2021, longtime bassist Mike Riley retired from the road due to health issues and 15-year veteran Donnie Lee Clark departed as well, paving the way for new members Jared Kamick and Jeff Zona. With Jared playing the bass and Jeff being the guitar player, both of them contributing on vocals in different ways. Riley did return briefly in February 2022 as a special guest on the Rock Legends Cruise. And as of the recording of this video in April of 2024, Pure Prairie League is still touring. They're occasionally on the Grand Ole Opry and also touring local theaters here and there and you know, maybe sometimes a cruise as well. But right now, there is only one original member still in the lineup, with it being John David Call. And that's what happened to Pure Prairie League. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give me some facts about Pure Prairie League that I failed to mention in this video. Let me know who I should do next on this channel as well. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.